In this video, I show you the Ghost Ship by Mythic Roll. But before we get into today's video, just want to share with you what the GGGGs are for this month. Each month, Bob the Beholder picks some of my Patreon supporters to receive gratitude gifts. And for this month of July of 2022, we have the Redgrass Wet Palette in hand and ready to deliver. Two pledges for the X-Terrain Sci-Fi 3D Prints that is currently on Kickstarter. The Legendary Hero Pledge of Sword and Sorcery Ancient Chronicles that is in hand and ready to ship. This printed and painted copy of this ghost ship, as well as two other Patreon supporters will be chosen to receive the STL files to print this out themselves. And then finally, $100 towards a crowdfunder, which our Patreon supporters are voting upon. If you want to find out more information, use my link below to go to my Patreon page, and you can get all the details there. I've made a couple of videos for Mythic Roll, especially when they were running their Kickstarter a while ago, but also subsequently some of their deliverables that I also printed out and was part of the GGGGs of previous month. Go ahead and check that video out here if you haven't seen that already. But out of all the things that Mythic Roll has produced, this is my favorite because not only is this a dice tower where you can feed your dice and it goes down here like so, but this can also be used as terrain for other games, for adventure games like Dungeons and Dragons or for ship battles or things like that. If you haven't seen my video where I did print out some printable scenery ships, go ahead and check that out here. I also have a painting tutorial at the end of this video, so if you want to know how I painted this up, go ahead and check that out. But this was quick and easy to be able to paint up just using some simple craft paints. This is a really fun piece because not only is it a ghost ship with these little skeletons crawling up the sides, but also these tentacles I think look awesome and adds a lot of flavor to this piece. And you're definitely able to put on miniatures onto the deck if you want to do that. Something like this would be perfect for a RPG where you are out on a boat, where they encounter a ghost ship like this, or it can even be used as terrain, especially if you are doing some skirmishes with miniatures in the ocean. So any of those features I think would work well with this set and uh, I think it looks awesome. Now I didn't glue the pieces down since it's going to be mailed to whoever Bob chooses among my Patreon supporters to receive. It'll be easier for me to ship um, with these pieces that are separated, but I highly suggest that once you do, if you do print this out or you do receive this, to go ahead and glue this all together so that it stays together as one piece. There really isn't any reason uh, to keep it separated like this. Also, the mast is not glued in yet. Again, I do suggest that you do glue this mast down. Again, there's no real reason to keep this out unless you're trying to put it all in a box or to store it away. That might be the only reason, but otherwise I think these pieces glue really well together. This front part here lifts off where you can store your dice. So that's another cool feature, which I think they designed really well. So this again is one of my favorite pieces from Mythic Roll. They do have a bunch of other dice towers. And if you haven't seen that, go ahead and use the links below to go to their website and you can see the multiple different style towers that they have, which I think are really cool. So this is a really short video today. Just wanted to highlight this and this being one of the GGGGs. Again, use the link below to go to my Patreon page if you want to get in on that. Otherwise, stick around and check out my painting tutorial. Again, this is super quick using some of my basic methods of how I paint up my terrain. Please hit that like button and subscribe for more videos on 3D printed terrain or on miniature games. Otherwise, happy gaming, happy painting, and we'll see you next time. As always, I start off with an undercoat of this Krylon camouflage, camouflage brown. And this just is really ultra flat, as it says here, very matte, so not shiny at all. You can use the Rust-Oleum version of camouflage paint as well. If you don't have that, just use the darkest brown that you can find and just give it a nice spray paint all over. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just grab my milk chocolate and I grab this hog's hair brush. It's relatively stiff. It just provides me some good coverage but prevents the paint from going down into the cracks and crevices. So that's why I use a hog's hair brush to do that. Pretty much you're gonna just do um, all of the wood and since there's a ton of wood on 
this ship, it's going to be most of the entire ship that you're going to be uh, putting this on. Now it's it's more paint than a regular dry brush would be, so but you'll notice that I'm not going into the cracks and crevices and allowing that dark brown to provide the shading and making sure that the paint doesn't go completely in there. And this model has a lot of texture to it, so that always helps painting. If the crevices are deep, then that ensures that we're going to have good texture on the model. So we're going to go ahead and not only do the deck, but also the ship as well. And you don't need to worry too much about getting it onto pieces, for example, like the tentacles that we're going to paint later. Uh, so don't worry too much about this. We're going to go through and do all of the details in different colors. But for now, since this is a predominant color, I'm going to be relatively sloppy and just get it into spots where I need to for the wood. Now, um, because the base coat is really dark brown, it is hard to get a coat of this. So I will go ahead once this dries, do a second coat just because it is a little bit too dull and toned down. Again, because this is a fairly dark uh, brown undercoat. So just helps out with that. And even the skull, I would say, that we're gonna paint uh, either black or gold. Go ahead and just do all of this, just because I'm not entirely sure what color I'm gonna do, whether or not I'm actually gonna do this skull a regular bone color, or if I'm gonna do a gold color for that, not 100% sure. So since I don't know, just go ahead and, and do most of this model with this milk chocolate. So this is pretty much what it looks like with two coats of the milk chocolate. And you can pretty much um, move on to the next step if you want to, but I am going to lighten it up a little bit with some honey brown. And I don't even wash off my brush to do this step. I just put some on, it doesn't matter if some of the old paint mixes in a little bit. And you want to be more sparse with this. And I did stick it together just so that the seam lines could be similar. And just very lightly am dry brushing. And you're, and you're not trying to go over everything, but just sort of the top parts where the light is going to be hitting. So this isn't a heavy coat but rather just uh, dry brushing a little bit. We're grabbing some black. I just used some uh, lamp ebony black from Americana. And I am basically doing the trim work, which theoretically are metal bands. Along, that run along the side of the boat. And there's three of them, one down here, one up here, and then one here right in the middle. And I switched over to my sable brush because I am not dry brushing. You want to do these cannons as well. And do this on all three pieces on both sides.
I'm grabbing some burlap or you can grab any beige or off-white and doing all of the roping and you can pretty much just um, dry brush because there is so much um, relief and texture on these ropes that as long as you're not putting in paint in the crevices you're going to get that nice shading from the dark brown still showing through so there's going to be just a lot of texture that you're going to be able to see off of this print which I really appreciate a lot so the ropes uh, do that on not only the mast but also there's a number of places uh, where they have rope now go ahead and grab any um, met metallic color that you want and I am grabbing here metallic copper from folk art but you can grab gold or anything else and I'm gonna do the decorative part at the front of the ship I think it's called the prow I don't I don't know my ship terms well enough to be confident in saying that but gonna go ahead and just paint all of this a metallic color just to have it pop a little bit more and just getting um, this section down here as well as the tentacles although you could choose a different color for the tentacles if you wanted to this has sort of like a Cthulhu like design to it which looks pretty neat and as you can see here I'm not completely filling in everything with the metallic cover but like everything else I'm leaving some shading with the dark brown and that looks good to me. I'm gonna go ahead and do the skull with the white that or the um, burlap color that I used for the ropes just because it's an off-white enough and I want it to stand out. I'm putting on some carousel pink for the tentacles the suction cups on the tentacles. They're a little bit hard to get to because a lot of them are facing the ship and so I had to like very carefully apply the paint sideways like this to get in there but this one here will be pretty easy to paint because it's just right here and I am again you know not painting the entire thing but letting the dark brown function as shadowing So that, that's pretty much what we're going for. 